All right, so I'm going to be posting this before my videos, guys, and you can partake in it or not, but we're going to do some singing bowls, and I'm going to say a little prayer, and you're welcome to just sit and relax and free your mind up before the reading with me. Um, I just wanted to do this. I'll timestamp it, so if you want to go straight to your reading, that's fine, too. So we're going to go ahead and start. are meant for, to assist them on their journey of healing and spiritual growth. I appreciate your unconditional love and guidance. Thank you, angels, guides, ancestors, and Lord of love. Amen. <sighs> okay, guys, so singing bowls, I'm just going to relax and listen. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Thanks for coming and checking out the channel. If you're returning, thank you for your continued support, your subscribes, your likes. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys um, more than you know. Um, I'm just overjoyed um, with you guys showing up and listening to your readings. And um, I know my readings are a little long, and you know I can't help the way I read. Um, I do try to get through it, but you know, most of the time, these messages, um, it takes me a minute to get into it, and then, you know, 15 minutes in, um, is kind of the peak of the message, and then on out. Um, so I never know what's going to come out, but I'm going to start with my earth signs today, and we are going to start with Taurus. So Taurus, right now, we have, and we are in the new space, you guys. Um, my Taurian husband, also, um, did a marvelous job on this space it is magical it's absolutely clear every time I come in here it's ready for new energy it's so nice um it's one thing you tortoises have a gift um with earthly matter and you can you really put your energy into your earthly matters and it just um it's magical it really is um you know when you put your energy into something it's just magical <laughs> so um I do want to say you know this, uh, there's no way I could build something like this. I can envision it, um, but building it's another thing. So thank you, the Taurus energy, you know. Um, it's just, you guys are builders and you're um, just sustainers and builders. And I know sometimes that's probably, you know, I always say like our sun signs kind of feel like our, our anchors or, you know, they anchor us to the earth matters and like what we're, they kind of make us feel at home. Um, like we don't know what to do with ourselves without that that sun energy that we got 
but there's so many other elements to your chart. So you're not just um, Taurus. You could have other things in your chart. Your moon, your ascendant most um, is one of the most important things. And I just recently um, discovered that a lot of astrologers use the, ascend they, the, the ascendants, the, the first thing you want to look at, then your sun, then your moon. So that's just some new information I found, and I thought I was pretty um, knowledgeable when it come to, I knew what the ascendant was, I just didn't realize how um, high it stands in, like when you're watching your readings and stuff, check out your ascendant, find out what your ascendant is, and you can go on Cafe Astrology, or there's other astrology sites you can get your chart, you guys. Okay, um, enough about the the space, and um, I just wanted to speak my gratitude. Um, we're going to say a little prayer, and then we're going to get into your guys' reading. Um, thank you, Spirit, for your guidance, protection, and unconditional love. I'm grateful for all none, known and unknown, seen and unseen, divine energy, guiding, allowing, and protecting us as we receive these messages with an open heart and mind. I pray these messages of healing and protection reach those who need them and those who fully embrace and express their own divine energy for the highest and most loving good. As we walk on the path of love, healing, and redemption, may your healing light touch, taint, and transmute all darkness with understanding, acceptance, and faith. In the holy light of love. Amen. Thank you, Spirit. I think I'm going to just ring the bowl for a second, guys. Just give me a second. starting out this reading with kind of an overall energy. These are kind of like the major arcanas. Let's see what comes out for you guys, Taurus. And we got the tower, and it did come in reversed. Um, it's very interesting. So there is movement um, at this point, I feel like. Um, you may have felt a little... Um, like you weren't really going anywhere, you didn't know quite what was next, and there's been a shift in perception. You're seeing things differently. Um, also, you know, I am getting that hangman energy with this card, but it's like, um, it feels like with, you may be looking more to nature, and um, this tower could have to do with like, what you're looking at in your life as, um, your foundation or your where you get, gain your most your your stability in your foundation um where before it kind of was like it's it's kind of crazy because it kind of feels like before it could have been very um straight narrow um kind of a one one track one road and then there's this wildness that's come in or this um this I, I'm feeling like a naturey energy, but it's like wild, a little wilder, not so um, I have to follow this certain path or I have to stay on this certain road. Like there's a little more to explore. I'm feeling like you might have found some more exploration in, and this could be causing a tower moment for you. Not all tower moments are bad, you guys. It's just a huge um, change in the way we travel and the way we root ourselves if we, if we, or if we're just, um, kind of going or if we're rooting ourselves. And I feel like you could be becoming a little more rooted and a little more of a nature-y energy, a more wild energy. And it doesn't mean wild, you're going crazy, like just a little more free, a little more um, natural, a little more natural. Um, it could be uh, 
kind of it could be some different energy you're experiencing right now. So we're, I'm going to get two of these oracles, um, Taurus. And then um, at the very end, I will read these um, oracles. And we got Messenger. Okay, so whenever I get these cards, anything with guidance, messengers, um, anything with ancestors, stuff like that, it tells me this is going to be a pretty profound message um, for you, Taurus, whoever's reading this is. And these are general, you guys, so, you know, they can't, an etheric body. Oh, okay. And that etheric body is also about the cleansing and the taking care of your aura or your 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 energetic field. Um, what you allow in it, what you don't. This could be what this tower is about. It's like um, where before maybe um, you weren't allowing some kind of freedom or um, maybe even nature like in its spiritual form into your etheric body. It's like you're feeling something different here in your energy, in your field. And this... Um, and then close the lid on the bottom. Okay, close the lid on me. And you know when I immediately when I'm reading, close the lid. It's kind of reminding me of packing away something, putting something away, um, uh, and and closing the lid on it for like ever or like you know like ending something. Um, maybe the way you were grounding yourself or the foundations you were deeming. As kind of the guide through your if this makes sense this is how it's coming to me it's like being guided by a certain foundation that's very straight and narrow and kind of um, it's clear it's a very clear unobscured path I feel you were walking and something shifted where it's much more broader and expansive and wild and um, it's like receiving now your roots or your information from more more source, more maybe more messengers because you're looking outside of just this um, kind of this uh, clear path, or this it could be even clearer, like straight, um, like human communication. I'm feeling like your spiritual body has opened up, um, and there's like a more freedom in and more acceptance of like nature into your aura or into your uh, energy. It's weird, it's like where, where there's a road here. And it's like I'm walking on the paved road, like the man-made road. And now I'm in the wild, like God's wild, the wild. You know, it's kind of interesting. That's what I'm getting. Um, that's a really nice message. It's a good feeling. Um, so we're going to get a little uh, tea spread here and um, see what comes out for you guys, Taurus. And we got the death card. The death card's coming out left and right. There's transformations and letting go of things and letting things, closing the lid on things, letting things die. And this has been a download for the last three days about the skull I had one. Um, you guys, it's crazy. Um, about the DNA, the um, our genetics, our, our rebirth, our transformations. Um, the death card here. So... Um, transformation there's still um working on a transformation here because it did come out reverse so it could still be feeling um not quite and then the page of swords looking around studying observing and analyzing the the new the message the the message or the messages coming into you maybe from more sources maybe nature god something outside of this this road that's kind of been man not the man's message, but like nature's message. Like there's a message I feel like you could be um, really looking at to see. And I think it could help you kind of finish a transformation or finish letting something die or putting the closing the lid on something, ending something. Um, you could be looking for that. Um, or you're seeing it and you're just analyzing it and thinking about it and trying to discern um and you could even be doing like research or looking into something um, that you've recently kind of your your mind's expanded on. Um, and then we've got the Five of Swords and it came out reverse, you guys. Or Five of Wands, excuse me. Uh, so this is ending a challenge. It's definitely observing, taking in information to put an end to a challenge. This has been challenging. Whatever this is, has been challenging your transformation. It could be about... Um, closing the lid on something, packing something away, 
Um, and there's the messenger here in the etheric body. It's shifting your en energetic field. Um, this is what this tower is. And this is a huge shift. Shifting that. Um, your, and cleansing. The cleansing. The etheric body. Cleansing the energy. Is a huge transformation. And it's it, it just affects the way you uh, function. The way you shine. The way you take care of yourself. Um, where this. It's like you're releasing this, this challenge. To this idea of maybe maybe death itself, maybe transformation itself, maybe the shift in perception or the shift in receiving information, um, or who your messenger is, who is guiding you, what is guiding you, um, are you being led by a road that's been paved, or are you exploring the wilderness? By that I mean exploring the energy outside of the the already. Um, that's an interesting message. And then let's see what's going on in the heart here the star healing healing and being guided with your heart um this is in the heart center of the reading and this is also could be some north node energy also i always look at the stars like north node energy um healing guidance guidance the messenger guiding you forward to explore analyze and look at things um maybe this also also thinking about communicating some things too stepping outside of a um kind of quiet place into a a louder more wild place by that i could mean in your communication also it's feeling like something has been kind of closed off singular and now it's expanded um whether this is your communication whether this is your knowledge of um communication messengers um where you're getting your messages um cleansing your there's a lot going on in your guys's reading so this star it's like reaching for your hopes your dreams also having faith in the process in your guides and in the celestial too you know i always look at the star as like constellation star star energy um but north node reaching for something here being guided by your heart being guided by your guides um maybe it's something outside of the the norm that you're used to it feels a little more expansive and wild um so that's really nice and let's see what's that why why is the communication and this healing and this following this um, north node energy because of the seven of swords this also came up for pisces so you may have pisces profoundly in your chart and you know i got a lot on the seven of swords the seven of swords can mean so much At the root of this this is the avoidance of um okay i'm going to start with a couple different because this is a general message so i'm going to start with a couple different ways i feel the seven of swords it's known as the thief card, the sneaking card, at the root of this new perception, this new maybe exploration of the mind and your healing process and transformation and this conflict about this change. So what the way I feel this, especially in your guys' reading, is this is where you felt there was um, only one way of like, handling something one way of getting out of something or one way of avoiding an a conflict or an obstacle and it was just kind of it was leaving you not being able to kind of maybe communicate um clearly um from a place that was more expansive if that makes sense <coughs> so this feels like you may have realized that you were avoiding something or running away from something or self-sabotaging something because of a lack of maybe um, receiving information or communicating um, could be with the the nature the energy outside of yourself and like taking something into your um, energetic field with the messenger and the etheric body here I feel like this is being like um, and this is at the root so this is why this healing is happening this is why um, this and this could also be like um, just fit, learning something new about the way you maybe didn't communicate or you did communicate and there was just like, you know, with Pisces, it was like with the Seven of Swords, it's like there's so much to this. Um, I always look at it as fear, too. It's like the guy in the original tarot is walking away from this camp with like all these swords and more than what he can carry. So he ends up dropping like five swords that aren't his anyway, um, but he leaves with two. And um, I feel like those are the two two swords that end up leaving you with a decision to make um like whether or not like should i have stayed should i have left should i have um confronted or um my obstacles or my challenges 
differently. I feel like this is about how you've confronted or um, handled obstacles or um, challenges um, in the way you communicate, um, where it might have been very straight um, path, narrow, now it's more broad and expansive. And I feel like this is a really good thing, Taurus. So if this is your reading, this is a good thing. There's, you're following your heart, you're following your north node, and you're letting things heal, um, which, you know, and you're being guided to heal in, in this heart, in the heart. And if it could really change the way you communicate or don't communicate um, when you are trying to transform um, the way you, you react when challenged or when you feel like um, this could be feeling like ganged up on or, you know, kind of challenged, like um, kind of releasing this challenge. Um, this is really a nice reading. So let's see what's on the bottom. And then the Eight of Moons, which is like the Eight of Cups. Okay, this goes with what I'm saying because there feels like there's been a normal way of going through, going through life, maybe reacting to communication, reacting to challenges, reacting to fear. Um, and it could have been like, and I, I say sneaky and, and not in this, but it could have been like avoidance or um, turning things, um, like leaving others like more vulnerable than, you know, making yourself feel stronger while you're making others feel more vulnerable, stuff like that. Um, this could be a, have been a challenge for you. And there's this tower happening that's just bringing in this new information. And it, I feel like it's coming from outside of yourself, from your guides, from nature, from God. Um, so I feel like it's kind of affecting your aura or your vibe. And this is a good thing because um, at the root of this, this shift, this change in the seven of swords, this is having a lot less fear. This is confronting your obstacles with um, facing it, facing your obstacles with and not 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 sneaking away, not walking away, and not sabotaging or just jumping the gun. Um, this is analyzing, thinking about it, and doing the kind of research, even if this isn't like actual research, this could be going in and just really mentally preparing for the actual conversation or preparing for the actual um, message, message, message. Um, whether this is you communicating that or receiving. So um, this is walking away from those emotions, the emotions that are attached to the way things have made us comfortable. So if we've been comfortable handling things this certain way because it's paved or because it's known to us, because it's clear, we can see it clearly. Um, and going into the unknown or the unclear um, can make us uncomfortable. That seems to be what you're doing is going into more of the unclear to get clear instead of staying on the clear to feel like you're staying in the clear <laughs> if that makes sense so the this is kind of a weird message but the eight of moons it's like those those emotional things that keep us have kept us comfortable um staying somewhere emotionally comfortable um just ain't it just isn't cutting it anymore it's like we want more we want um we want to be happy with ourselves that's the nine the nine of moons so um the eight of moons is kind of we're happy um, with everything else, but we're not because there's still this one part of us that needs to go wander in the wilderness and find that happiness for ourselves within ourselves. And I feel like part of this is your healing process and the way you handle maybe communication or not communi not communicating, um, especially during challenges or kind of feeling um, like, like um, also the five of wands could be like uh, wanting to be the best, you know, wanting to be the best, wanting to be... Um, and, and things put around us to challenge us to be better. So maybe releasing the feeling that this is a bad thing to be challenged to be better. Um, and, and you're doing a lot of thinking on this, I feel like, right now, whoever this reading is for. So um, we are going to get a couple of these. Um, this is a, called the Endless Oracle. Oracle, And I'll just read like the little um, bit of this, but we're going to see. we got the Zenith. This is a new deck, and I have not got this card in a reading um so i am going to read that the zenith this looks like a pathway up a monu monument um the observatory that is crazy okay this is interesting and the cohort okay so oh and i'm just intuitively getting this okay so um i will read this though but the zenith it looks like there could be a path or something you're taking um, you're looking at, and you, you see the, um, how do I put this, with the observatory right next to it, it's like kind of going into, this looks like a, um, like ruins, like a, like ruins, 
and but it's like a sacred place that's old and maybe even forgotten and maybe even hidden like that wild place that I'm kind of talking about and it's like you're heading into this old um, unknown but wild but place that has existed forever and there's an observatory and this is where you can see more you can understand more you can um, see things from a higher perspective um, and observe the whole picture and then we got the cohort and I, this looks like a bunch of little like people gathered around like a campfire you know sharing um, their time together so uh, this could be really broadening your mind about the the groups or situations or things you know kind of finding that soul tribe finding that um, connection to what you're seeing kind of in the wild to what you're seeing on the ground with the people um, this is very interesting so I am gonna read this because um, I'm curious about okay the Zenith Probably like the last card because it starts with a Z. Here we go. It's close. Um, coming full circle, success, apex, apothesis, culmination. You are on top of the world. Things are coming full circle, reaching their greatest peak. Soaring heights can often feel frightening. And that could be this tower. It's like, oh my gosh, everything's like bigger and expansive, and I'm seeing way more, and I'm feeling way more, and like. All these messages, you know, you might be getting a lot more messages than you're used to getting because you're used to kind of keeping your eyes focused on the road and on the kind of the reality instead of like the, this has been a theme collectively, you guys, reality and illusion. And it's like keeping your eyes on like what's there, what's already like set in stone when now we're going beyond that. That's what it feels like. Um, reaching their greatest peak, soaring heights can often feel frightening, but only because we are at a point where we are looking down and feeling afraid to fall. Not wanting to come, I don't want to come back down from this cloud bush. And that, I'm going to put a link to that um, music video under this video because that's what just came to mind. Um, goals might be accomplished or a sequence of events may have culminated towards a climax. It may be time to consider what is next or ask ourselves how we can lift up those around us now as we become more experienced ourselves. This is nice. It's the highest point directly above the specific, a specific location. In astrology, it is called a medium, the MC. Um, so your, look up your MC um, in your chart also, you guys. Um, and if you, because this can have to relate, because this is how the messages come in, but your MC. Um, so on your chart, you have a, you know, it's your midheaven, basically. Um, but yeah, it, medium, medium coolie. And it is associated with achievements. It's where you're going to achieve the most success in your life um, is in that sign or that, so that, if this is about staying at a successful point in your life, Taurus, look up your MC and see how this sign or this correlation to this MC relates to your success. It's where you're, you're most likely to become successful and most likely to feel successful um, and achieved. So that is a really great message that that came in like that. And then the observatory. This is telling me also to look at your chart. So if you're a Taurus um, watching this video and you're just um, mo most people that watch my videos are uh, older I'd say but you never know so look up that chart look up those those placements I don't say it enough you guys but it is important and um observatory look at the sky look at how it's playing with your chart I will say this we're leaving Taurus um Scorpio north and south node right now we're getting ready to get into Libra and Aries and I know in my life I'm going to be observing that happening because um my husband he's coming in this a lot um but he um is a libra north node in a aries south node so it's going to be flipped so that south node is going to be more powerful than the north node energy and there's it's going to be a really spiritual time for him i i feel this is just me and the knowledge i do have which is not <laughs> ever feel never feels like you know enough but it's always I'm always learning something and I'm always gaining new knowledge whenever I can especially about astrology especially about um, the connection we have to the greater skies than what we can see so um, the observatory we are gonna read this this is really a nice message observation study learning watching calculations that's this page of swords and the stars right below it so it's like really maybe taking this star energy this um, 
universal energy, this wild energy into your heart and letting it guide you. Maybe you are even studying astrology and letting maybe a little bit of astrology come into your guidance, come into your, and be a messenger for you. I am feeling that, that astrology um, energy. Um, so it says you have a lot to learn or gain by examining your situation closely, taking time to dissect and study it and uncovering all the minute details within the greater whole. This card calls us, and not leaving details out either. With the Seven of Swords, it's like, um, don't, it's like not taking too much away from um, those, like, this is another thing, and this is a coming in, interesting, but the Seven of Swords also, when he walks away with all the swords, those details or those communications, it's like he's taking, like, how do I put this? If Right now, I'm just getting this, but it's like feeling like, taking the communication away from people to speak their mind or um, to listen to others, like not even giving the communication a chance. Um, yeah, so so pay attention to that too by um, what you're observing and what you're allowing in your communication and if you're allowing that. If you're allowing the communication to happen or the um, challenge or the um, conflict or whatever to be even talked about or if you're just not talking about it at all and just kind of sweeping it under the rug that could be another a message for somebody but um it's just kind of a side message i got people nearby may have things to teach us so we should listen carefully and see what example they may they may set it may not yet be time to take action but rather observe and that's what i'm seeing here is you observing a transformation that's happening within yourself about how you handle um yourself when it comes to um fears uh um, and, the, and I always look at the Seven Swords too, it can feel like um, it's fear of like getting um, ganged up on or like not having enough weapons yourself to fight a battle that, you know, but there might not even be a battle there. It might just be challenging you to step up. Like somebody's words or conversation could just kind of trigger you to want to fight or run away or just drop the whole conversation in general um, instead of taking what you, you know, taking it as a challenge to like expand your mind or expand your um this messenger energy, take in some things that you can use from it. I always say that about these messages too that I do. It's like, there's so many messages in here. One thing might just be like confirmation and then the rest might just be like, eh, it doesn't mean the whole message is is crap. It's just those certain parts are for other people or um, just not for you right now. It doesn't mean even later those won't come in handy. But sometimes there's just that one tidbit, but if we don't give it a chance, we don't get the information. So we got to give these things a chance. Um, even if it's like something you're not used to um, walking down that road or you're not used to looking at that sky or you're not used to it feeling so like, oh my gosh, you mean I got to take in all this information from everywhere? I can't just look on the road and follow the dotted line? You know, that's kind of what it's feeling like, Taurus. It's like stepping off that paved road into the wild to receive and not be feel the fear of an extra, extra amount of messages and information coming into you. Receiving a lot of information um, and guidance through things that are, you might not be used to uh, re getting direction from. That's, that's what, I'm, what I'm trying to say. Um, remember that while it may be time to wait and watch, the information you obtain now will be put to good use later. It could be something you're observing right now. Some kind of um, conversation, maybe some kind of situation that maybe deep down you know um, this is part of the transformation. It's like not, not running away or not hiding from um, observing this or watching this or stepping off your normal um, reaction or your normal emotional like um, comforts, stepping out of your emotional comfort zone and stepping into a comfort zone that's more you, more in alignment for you and will make you feel better um, than the old old ways, um, all the old ways of handling things that just don't feel like they're cutting it anymore. Like that, that's the energy I'm getting. So it says the waxing gibbous moon. When the moon is nearly full, it is a symbol of the last steps of a journey. So you could have been really experiencing this right before this last full moon. Um, which we had on the third. So you probably maybe were really starting to observe this and feel this and kind of take this into your field um, maybe two or three days before that. Well, this could be, if you're not in that part of the process, it could be coming up for the next full moon. Um, we are going to have our new moon in Cancer um, and the nodal switch all between like the 17th and the 19th. It's going to be big, big stuff, guys. I'm excited. Um, it is a symbol of the last steps of a journey. It encourages us to keep our eyes focused on the goal before us. Staying focused on the goal, but the way you get there is is changing. It's shifting. There's a tower here. So there's some way shifting in the way you ground yourself and foot yourself to attain 
the information or the guidance or the direction that you are, are looking for in your life. So that's really big. That's awesome. I love that message. I love that message. Um, all right. So we are going to read. Um, we're going to read. Oh, the cohort. I was going to read that real quick which is social, social circle, friends and family. You could be observing your social circle, your friends, your family, maybe receiving some um, guidance or some um, maybe being open to conversations or um, maybe things that felt challenging before. You're feeling more observant now and you're feeling more like analyzing now and kind of looking at it differently. Um, domestic life, security in the family. So this could definitely be looking at your family situation different. Going to a... Go full circle in the family or friends or your tribe and seeing things um, quite differently and coming to the circle differently. Therefore, you are now, you've always been part of this, but now you're a different, um, you're looking at it differently. There's something differently you're looking at differently and probably within the way you secure yourself. This is that security of emotions. This is that security of the way you handle um, challenges and obstacles. Um, definitely something shifting here and that's where your transformation whoever this reading is for is happening mainly for right now um it's very nice it's uh collaborators companions broader relationships also this card represents our own cohort of friends family co-workers and so on our broader relationships pay attention to social circles when this card appears um they may often support you during difficult times and be a force against time or be the very force against which you are working Whatever the case may be, this card signals that they are important right now. How is your network of friends and associations relevant in your current situation? It is time to reach out for others for help, um, out to others from help, or is or is now the time to establish stronger boundaries with those who are close to you? So either way, this can go both ways. That's these readings, guys, and that could be why you're observing and deciding. You know, am I going to like turn my back on this? Um, even though it could feel like, you know, it's like you're not really. Um, this is part of your transformation is this observing and this um, deciding, you know, it, you could have been in the like, you know, that two of swords. And I was feeling that um, when I said he walks away with two swords, it leaves you with a decision. Um, so it always leaves you with a decision of whether you may, made a good choice to. And this can be setting strong boundaries too. Um, whether you make a good choice to like leave a situation or you make a good choice to stay. Um, it's, but sometimes we can jump the gun either way. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have stayed or maybe I should have left or anything like that. So if that's, um, that's something you're observing right now, taking in. So I really love that. And in the, in the sky, cause I love this deck because it has an in the sky, which is like a message from the, the stars, you know, this is Aquarius. A zodiac often associated with people who are independent but still maintain a strong sense of brotherhood with those around them. It suggests an ability to work well with others. Yeah, how are you working with others? How are you um, collaborating and cooperating and um, being a part of the camp? Which, that's interesting because this is a camp. How are you part of the camp? How are you part of the, the place? You know, are you, um, you know, are you exiting a place where you could contribute um, or are you making it difficult for them or for others in the camp to um, do their work because you're you're not allowing them their uh, their their words or their communication or their way of of communicating or handling um, conflict or challenges there's something about that here Taurus so um, that's really a big message. So let's read the messenger and the etheric body real quick. Really big message here. Yeah, this doesn't have... It is in alphabetical order, which I really appreciate alphabetical order because it's a lot easier to find the card but what are your beliefs what is it that you want to share with the world with your community that's it we are all messengers of some sort listening to others messages message messages and you sharing your messages this is also the seven of swords is not sharing your messages and not allowing others to share theirs so that could be avoidance of open communication, expansive and wild communication that can open up your mind to a way more um, broad and expansive place than just the one road, the one track, 
the one walk down what you only know and you know it's very empty there but here there's going to be a lot of noise in the forest there's going to be a lot of a lot of messages coming in and leave leave the messages that aren't that you don't see fit for you and definitely be open to the ones that could help um that's what i'm getting sharing our truth with souls around us yes and sharing your truth that's what this is about is sharing your truth do we back out of sharing our truth do we not allow others to share their truth do we, you know, this is the stuff I feel like you're observing and contemplating and thinking about right now, Taurus. Um, we are all conduits passing along information from one place to another. To hold a belief and to share it with others for the good of the collective can be one of the most rewarding acts we can do. To be a messenger is to know something or to fill it. And then offer this information with those who want or need to hear it. If they want or need to hear it. Do you want or need to hear um, things going on around you? Are you observing all that? This is the vibe I'm getting from you guys' reading. We can have an individual way to access the wisdom of the universe. The individual way. That's this road. The individual way to access the wisdom of the universe. And we also have our own unique ways to interpret what is received from it. Others pay attention and listen to you as your message is genuine. It has the best interest of others, and it is able to illuminate and inspire. Your voice may join those who have similar messages, but your voice, voices will always remain utterly distinctive. Today's earthly world offers a multitude of ways to share your message and to find those like-minded souls you wish to reach out to. Speak your truth and feel the freedom that comes with it, that freedom where there isn't a lot of freedom walking in a path that's six feet wide, you know, but many, many miles long. It's so expansive and you'll get so much more from stepping off that, um, the regular, like your regular way. And I feel like you are getting this and this is part of this transformation. And you probably just at the end of this, um, last bit of observation before this, it could feel very, you're just observing this shift, this big change in this messenger energy, the messengers that are around you and message you have to bring really observing that. Um, interpret the ways you see and experience the cosmos and see yourself. Step into a whole new space of your own truth. Yes, this is really nice, um, Taurus. I love it. Let's go to etheric body. If I remember right, this is about um, cleansing and making sure you're taking care of yourself. Um, your aura is the layers of glowing energy that envelops your physical being. It is an intris intrinsic part of you. And just like any other part, it requires attention to be cared for and to be loved. Every single day we encounter other beings, sentient or not, that cast off their own energies that can leave a layer of dust which coats our own etheric body. And that could be this messenger energy too. It's like being very aware of the other people's, um, and it is challenging, you know, to take care of yourself and kind of um, allow others their energetic input and their to put their energy out there, but not to fully absorb it but to recognize what, when you need to kind of get back to your, your truth, your authentic truth, your center, which is still there in spite of the things we can learn about other, um, through our environment or through other people. And um, we still have our own like special fingerprint in the messages and the contribution we bring to um, the collective and to each other. Um, this is a lot of filled message, you guys. Um, it is also depends on your ability to provide protection for your spirit. The dust can also cause doling of the aura's colors. So uh, making sure you're allowing positive, good energy into your, and that's probably why you're observing and it's like um, trying to determine whether this is good for your transformation or not good for your transformation or what is, and what could you be more open to? What can you, um, um, or what do you need to be more, um, walk away from? You know, what do you need to uh, walk away from old, emotional ways of handling things or old um, ways of navigating, staying on um, the same known path or exploring outside of that. Um, that is what I'm getting. So um, your aura is the light by which the universe and all its beings identify you. Ensure your vibrational signature is strong, healthy, and glowing. Making sure your vibe is strong, healthy, and glowing. Um, and doing that by whatever means it takes, whether this is that. And it's probably actual like cleansing, like cleaning your body, taking care of yourself, but also um, and do observe like the way you interact with 
your groups or they interact with you or the kind of energy it kind of leaves in your etheric body. You know, how do you feel um, is very important. It's all about the feelings, um, the messenger and the feelings. So that is awesome. And I just pulled out, um, let's see where we at. We got a little bit. I want to pull a little quote card for you guys. I pulled these out just kind of, um, just randomly this morning. I'm like, you know, I was thinking about them earlier and I'm like, I want to do a little quote card. I made all these little quotes and here is the quote. <laughs> it's called drafts. Can any, but anyone lend me two 80 pound rats? I want to rid my house of cats. <laughs> Shell Silverstein. I love that. Oh, and then we got the invisible boy. And here we see the invisible boy in his lovely invisible house, feeding a piece of an invisible cheese to a little invisible mouse. Oh, what a beautiful picture to see. Will you draw an invisible picture for me? Oh, Shel Silverstein also. Very interesting. Getting a clearer and real picture of something that's invisible. I want to read my house of cats. That's very interesting. And then this one is Michael Jordan and it says you must expect great things of yourself before you can do them. I have the power to change on the bottom. So I love that. I love that. You guys. So it's it, and it's also not expecting other people to see or understand or rid your house of cats that's your job no one can lend you um to 80 pound rats <laughs> you know it's i want to rid my house of cats like if you don't want something in your house or your etheric body you have to figure out how to face that challenge or that um obstacle or whatever it is and it's kind of interesting with the invisible boy here it's like it's nice, it's like that Seven of Swords energy I'm kind of getting. It's like a not being seen, not being heard. Isn't it lovely to just um, not have anything to worry about? But that's just, um, it leaves you doing nothing because drawing an invisible picture is absolutely, it requires no work. It requires no work if everything's invisible. But we know that to not be true. We know things to be very visible, um, even in the invisible. It's very visible. It comes out in our matter. It comes out in our lives. Um, so you must expect great things of yourself before you can do them. So, you know, first expecting that of yourself and then doing it. So this is really nice, Taurus. So um, as always, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you showing up, watching your reading. Appreciate your likes, your subscribes. I'm absolutely um, composure, you guys. I just had to pull an animal card. Composure. Staying composed. Staying focused on your transformation right now, Taurus. Um, and just keeping your etheric body full of the things you want in it, being open to everything, but also understanding that everything that touches you, everything that um, used to have your own specific signature to things. So um, keep that in mind as you go through this time period. Um, I appreciate you guys. I hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you later.